Okay, welcome back. This is part two of the camera motion path animation. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to lengthen the timeline. If you've already have it set, you can see here I have mine set at 1000. And if I look through my camera, by changing my panels and going to my camera view, and you can see that I've changed my camera view right here in the viewport, it says camera one. And if I hit play, it kind of moves along pretty fast. And I might want to slow it down, maybe double it. So if I change my timeline here to 2000, and that also changes for me, and then go back to the beginning and go out of my camera and back into my perspective view, you can see my timeline. And here it still says 1000 for my endpoint. If I click on it, it should change, but right here in the time, it has not because I haven't actually made any changes. So let's take a look at what it looks like here in my animation line. You can see here that there is 1000 here. Okay. So now if I click on this, go to my position marker two, my time here, I can change this to 2000. And that now changes to 2000. If I go back to my camera line, you can see that here, my timeline is now 2000. If I fast forward my camera along to the end, however, when I get to 1000, you can still see that it's roughly still in there. And then we have a little bit of a slowdown right in here. So it goes over a thousand just a little bit. So what I need to do now is I need to take this line, having, a, having a, selected my camera here, this line here, and I need to adjust it so that this camera comes in here at about 2000. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my time slider and get it close to 2000. Grab the little diamond on the end and you see when I click on it with my left mouse button, I get that little viewpoint there. And if I slowly move this down until the camera starts to move downward, There we go. Okay, so now right around there somewhere, I'm gonna hold my Alt button and my middle mouse button and I'm going to scroll over just a little bit and then I'm gonna zoom in so I can see it more closely so I can fine tune this. And the line is actually outside 2000 because the camera also will go through a little bit of a slowdown. So if I grab my slider and I move it forward to 2000, you can see that it's not quite there. It's all the way here, here's the end of my line. So now I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna try to fine tune it just a little bit more. It looks like it wants to go up just a little bit. Maybe right there. Yep. So by doing that, we get the ease in and ease out. There's an ease in and ease out that's defaulted in the system. What that means is the ease in is it starts slowly and then it goes up to its max speed and then it goes through its stays at a constant speed all the way through your animation. And at the end, there's this ease out. So it starts to slow down as it gets to the end of the animation from its regular speed. Okay, so with that, we now have our timeline adjusted. But we're still looking down through our camera. If I went back to my panels, back to my camera, and hit play, see that we have this ease in, it kind of slowly starts, and then we pick up speed. And now we've slowed down significantly. I've basically cut my time in half. So it's a little bit easier. It gives me more of a feel of maybe being in a helicopter instead of in a jet plane trying to fly through the narrow confines of the city. All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to my perspective view. And in my timeline, I have set up a object that might be our area of focus. In this case, it's the battleship Yamoto. I downloaded it from TurboSquid. It was a free model. 
and you can see that it's now in the center of our city scene and my lines that I created earlier through my park area kind of uh, zoom over the top of it what I want to do is I want to be able to adjust my camera view so that the battleship is now my main center of focus instead of my path and it's pretty easy to do that so let me go ahead and first adjust us back so we can see my timeline and complete if I have the camera selected and my mouse down here and hit F you can see that here is my timeline it's been now centered for my focus and here you can kind of see the slow curve up and then the slow curve out that's the ease in and ease out that I was talking about for the animation we can adjust it by clicking on the diamond here at the end and then if we grab one of these we can adjust them up and down so on either end there's a handle but I'm going to leave it this time I don't want to have a constant speed I want this to kind of give us a uh, popping into the scene and just kind of gently moving through it all right so now I'm going to move back into my camera and I'm going to also bring up my channel box over here on my right hand side if you don't have the channel box you can select these little stacks of paper looking icon and that will bring up your channel box now as we go to make these keys we're going to set keys and i'm going to turn on my auto key down here this will help me we want to make sure that the only keys we are going to set are our rotate keys if we set a translate key that'll lock your camera in that position and it will no longer move along the path we do not want to change our translate so I'm going to highlight these three by just clicking on the first one and holding the shift button and selecting the bottom one and highlighting all three. And now looking through my camera, holding my alt button and my left mouse button, I can rotate my camera. You can see my numbers are changing here in my rotate. And I'm going to set it up so that I'm looking at the battleship at the very beginning. And now I'm going to right click, click and hit key selected and my initial keys are set. I grab my camera and move along my camera is going to stay looking sideways at this position all the way through my path but I don't want that so what I want to do is I want to adjust it so that my camera has this view as I'm moving through it of following this battleship as much as possible so I'm going to go down to the bottom down here and I'm going to rotate my camera back up and I'm going to use in-betweens to help me adjust the camera. And you can see that using my auto key, the, X, the axes that I was moving, which in this case are the X and the Y for the rotate, moved and already auto keyed. My Z did not. Most likely my Z throughout this entire process will not change. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit my key selected anyway, just to keep my Z constant, just in case something happens and I need to move it later on. All right, so now, if I scroll backwards, you can see that my camera slowly follows the ship as I descend downward. And that's the um, in-betweening that uh, Maya does automatically for us. And now once I get to that key and I move forward, you can see that my camera is now stuck in that same position. So what I want to do is move it forward a little ways. And I want to look back up here at the battleship. We continue following it that way right there and you can see that my again auto key has helped me i'm just going to go ahead and hit key selected to bring the z along and then if i scroll back and forth through it you can see the auto key so the in between is working for me it's following the ship and now as i start to move backwards and away from it i'm still following the ship and right here I'm going to back up just a little bit. Right here, I still want to have this sort of feeling like the cameraman is still focusing on the main portion of the ship right here. And I'm going to hit key selected. So now, see as the, we move through it. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more just to kind of give us a feel for the idea here. And then I will pause and I'll let you know when I do that. Okay, so. Now that we've moved away from being able to see the ship, we may want to be able to actually look in the direction that we're moving. So I'm going to scroll down this block a little ways. 
and now rotate my camera forward, something like that. Get my auto keys in there, key selected again. And now as we move away from the ship, the cameraman is rotating the camera forward, anticipating the direction that we're moving. And we're gonna go around a turn here. So what I wanna do is, again, get the feeling that we're hanging out the side of the cam the helicopter maybe with the uh, camera anticipating the direction that we're going. And I'm gonna rotate it around that direction. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so now we're moving along, flying through the city, zooming over the top, and the camera is still looking in that direction. If I come this way, and the camera is going, we're gonna move this way, so I'm gonna move the camera kind of up this way. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, and then as we break through here, we're going to start seeing the ship again. So I'm going to rotate the camera, looking in that direction. As you can see, we're maintaining focus throughout. So we're moving this direction, and we're back on the ship. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pause. I think you get the idea about how to to maneuver around inside the camera to refocus the camera where you want it to look and setting your keys. That's the process I'm going to use throughout the rest of this. I am going to go ahead and complete mine and then at the end play it so you can see what the finished results look like and bring out any uh, additional tips or points that you might need to know about. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that. Pause you right now. Okay, so now that uh, I finished up with all of my keyframing, you can see that right along here, I've got quite a few keyframes added in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, everything's kind of slowed down a little bit from what we had initially. I've got a nice long look at the ship as we're slowly descending and kind of flying across the rooftops. And then as we move through the scene with the helicopter we twist around get a little bit of the city shots go up and down some of the streets here zoom back around to see the ship give it a flyby keeping the ship uh, as the focal point most of the time through this path. A little bit of a look at this building. And then we slowly do an ease out as we go up and then recenter the ship as if we're hovering over the top of the ship. Okay, so that's uh, basically it for this part of the lesson. You can see uh, all these blue lines that are out here. So our line for our path, all these blue lines and these reference points around the ship. This ship has got quite a few um, rigs on it so that we can move the different guns around. Uh, all of these, when we render, will not be seen. So later on, as we get ready to finish this up, we're going to add some background, a little bit more detail to the scene, and then we'll render it out. And I'll walk you through that in the next lesson, maybe two lessons. All right. So thank you, and I'll talk to you later.